are we ready for cyborgs? People with implants that go beyond mere cosmetic enhancements and into the realms of developed beings? Hey folks, welcome back to AI Science. In today's video, we'll be talking about cyborgs. Before we get into the video, don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe on the channel if you haven't already. Make sure that the post notifications are turned on so that you never miss a video from us. Without further ado, let's dive in. Kyle Reese, a soldier from the future who appears in the film, describes the Terminators as cyborg machines with a metal endoskeleton within the live tissue on the outside. But it was in 1984 and Arnold was in it. Is that something we're getting close to now? 2022, where is cyborg technology? Do we see cyborgs in the near future? After the debut of the 1984 film The Terminator, the term cyborg gained popularity. The 600 series has a rubberized body. These were easy to see, yet they were novel to us. They appeared to be human, sweat, bad breath, everything. It's quite harder to identify. Two scientists coined the term cyborg to describe a futuristic person that was half machine, part human, more than five decades ago. In a 1960 paper about changing man's body functions to match the requirements of extraterrestrial habits, Manfred Kleins and Nathan S. Klein covered chemistry, biology, and mechanical engineering when they coined the word cyborg. Despite the fact that it was science fantasy at the time, some 20,000 people already have RFID chips embedded in their skin that can unlock doors. In some ways, these humans are cyborgs. A cyborg is a person who is both physically and technologically connected in some way. For more than a decade, the highly controversial cybernetics professor has been making headlines. His high-profile experiments and much higher profile claim that he is the world's first living cyborg, earned him column inches and an ugly moniker. He's used his mind to operate a robotic hand, sent his thoughts across the Atlantic while clenching a mechanical fist, and even felt the signals from his wife's nerve in his own synapses. Kevin Warwick is a cybernetics pioneer and former cyborg who teaches at Reading University in England. Due to an electrical chip in his body, doors would open and lights would turn on after his death in 1998. In 2002, a 100 electrode array was implanted into his arm's nerve system that he could control a mechanical hand remotely. Warwick's ability to control a robot with his nerves was genuinely innovative in 2002, but the feat has now been replicated multiple times. Amputees may now feel and interact with artificial limbs like smart hand and life hand, thanks to similar research. RFID chips, like the one Warwick had implanted in 1998, are becoming more prevalent, with applications ranging from security to credit card replacement. Warwick was far ahead of the pack in each case. Meet the first individuals to detect the direction of the north. A little silicone device worn on the chest allows the person to know which way they are facing. Could this lead to a cyborg progression of human capabilities? Leave you Babbitts lifts his collar to reveal a matchbox sized silicone device linked to his chest by two titanium bars that rest just beneath the skin. The North Sense, which Babbitts has fitted and looks like a miniature bike light, is an artificial sense organ that emits a short vibration whenever the user faces north. Babbitts had the North Sense, one of the company's first artificial senses, implanted in two piercings on his chest in December 2016. It functions as a digital compass, vibrating whenever it faces the Earth's magnetic pole. Hundreds of individuals have placed orders for the $350 waterproof USB chargeable device, which will be delivered in the coming months. Babbitts believes that we'll all be cyborgs in the not too distant future. In the same way that tattoos were previously the domain of the fringe, Babbitts and Cohen expect this type of body modification to become increasingly mainstream. The North Sense is an extreme choice right now, but it will remain such in a few years when the stigma around cyborgs, as Babbitts and Cohen see themselves, fades. After all, many of us are already aided by technology, whether through the use of glasses or the implementation of pacemakers, cybernetic prostheses, or electromagnetic identifying chips to manage the environment around us. Where should the border between humans and cyborgs be drawn along this spectrum of body modification? Neil Harbison, for example, 
is a blind artist who can only experience the world through a head implant. He envisions a new and better future with increased senses, thanks to technological advancements. The 27-year-old was born with acromatopsia, a condition that causes him to only see black and white. He co-designed the antenna and implanted it in his head at the age of 21. It works by using a camera and the prong to take up colors around him and translate them into vibrations that are transferred directly into his head, helping him to see the colors. Harborson, on the other hand, refers to it as a new organ rather than wearable technology. The UK government appears to agree with him since the antenna has subsequently been attached to his passport, making him the world's first recognized cyborg. Harbison's dream, however, does not end there. He's a transhumanist activist or someone who believes that the next step in human evolution is the melding of technology and humanity. According to him, mankind must now construct and adapt their own bodies to match their lifestyles and reclaim what they've lost. Transhumanists believe that we will no longer be able to change our surroundings. We must now transform ourselves. According to legend, the human brain is the most complex biological structure ever created. While science still does not fully comprehend the brain, researchers in the growing discipline of neuroscience have made significant advances. Neuroscientists have made significant progress in understanding the intricate functioning of the brain's 85 billion neurons and the 100 trillion connections that connect them. A neuroprosthetic device known as a brain-computer interface has been developed by Neuralink, a Silicon Valley startup sponsored by Elon Musk. Musk thinks that this chip might, among other things, cure tinnitus, a neurological disorder that produces ringing in the ears, in five years. Is this, however, feasible? What exactly is Neuralink? A precise surgical robot implants the coin-sized Neuralink gadget known as a link flush with the skull. A thousand microscopic strands from the link are connected to specific neurons by the robot. Each thread is around the size of a human hair in diameter. The device uses Bluetooth to connect an external computer for continuous communication. Neuralink prothesis may one day aid persons suffering from a variety of neurological illnesses involving a connection or dysfunction between the brain and the nerves that serve the body. People with paraplegia, quadriplegia, Parkinson's disease, and epilepsy fall into this category. Since its founding in 2016, Neuralink has been enlisting the help of top-tier neuroscientists from academia and the broader research community to create technology to treat these diseases. The business released a spectacular proof-of-concept video in April 2021. It featured Pager, a nine-year-old macaque monkey effectively playing Pong with his mind, thanks to an implanted Neuralink device connected to a computer running the game. The Neuralink technology, according to Elon Musk, might cure tinnitus by 2027. Tinnitus is a neurological disorder that causes a ringing or buzzing in the ears when no external source is present. Elon Musk believes that humans must evolve into cyborgs in order to remain relevant. Is he correct? Jesse Sullivan, called the world's first bionic man, lost his arms in a workplace accident while working as an electrical linesman. He was able to replace his arms with robotic prosthesis at the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago, which allowed him to lift objects simply by thinking about it, owing to a technique that connected his neurological system to the artificial arms. This type of bionic medicine entailed linking nerves that used to run down Sullivan's arms to muscles in his chest. When he thinks about lifting an arm, for example, particular muscles in his chest contract instead of muscles in his original arm, which the prosthetic replacement reads as a command to move in a specific way. During a 2005 operation at RIC's Center for Bionic Medicine, Sullivan was the first to get this treatment. Next, we have Ackland whose right forearm was crushed in an industrial blender in 2006, and it changed his life forever. Following that, he endured six months of discomfort, surgeries, and infections before deciding on an elective transradial amputation. Acklin became the first person to try RSL Steeper's groundbreaking myoelectric prosthetic hand, the Bibionic 3, after a series of bad encounters with traditional prostheses. Acklin is on a quest to change the way people think about prosthetics and to combat stereotypes about prosthetic users. Above all, he wants to ensure that better-designed, wearer-friendly prostheses 
are available to everyone who need them. Because the benefits of the user are so evident, Acklin envisions a bright future for modern prosthesis. Are you ready for the impending age of robots? Do let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for more content just like this one and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to smash that like button and also press the bell icon to get notified about our new videos. Until then fellas, 